Hello and welcome to the first Simon Miller's Pro Wrestling Podcast of 2018. Now, this is going to be a slightly weird episode because for one, I'm recording this both for YouTube, there you are, and I'm recording this for the podcast because I know a lot of people always say to me that they enjoy listening to the podcast on YouTube. I don't know why. I don't mind you do whatever you want. That's good for you. But then they say, when I just upload the audio, someone would like to see your face. So you're getting my face and you're also getting this shadow here because where I record the podcast has bad lighting. But I'm thinking, screw it. If that's better than an image, that's better than an image. Now, the other thing you may be wondering to yourself is, Simon, why is this podcast going up on a Tuesday? You told us that Simon's Pro Wrestling Podcast goes up every Wednesday and that's true. However, it's a new year. It's 2018. And that means we've got to do new things. Otherwise, we're standing still. And if we're standing still, we're not moving forward. And if you're not moving forward, well, you're not going anywhere. Like if you had a car that didn't move forward, that would suck. Anyway, not the point. So what I thought I'd do is, because sometimes life does get the better of me, and I kind of do these miniature short podcasts that last about 45 minutes, even though the point is I like to more than an hour, I thought what I'd do is I'll split it up. I'll split it up throughout the week, and then hopefully that kind of builds up. And then if you want to come you know, visit the podcast at the end of the week, you'll have loads of stuff. So take for this week, for example, what we're going to do is um, we're going to do... Uh, Raw review right now. We're going to go through Raw. We're going to talk about that as we do usually on the podcast. But then tomorrow, we'll do SmackDown and we'll go through that as we usually do on the podcast. However, we'll break them up and they'll be on YouTube and and all that noise. So we're going to try that, but there'll be specials as well. So when we have a pay-per-view such as Wrestle Kingdom 12 that's happening this Thursday, we'll do one for that as well. Hopefully, you've got like a nice big chunk of change at the end of the week, you know, to to get your Simon Miller Pro Wrestling Wrestling podcast fill. This is weird because I'm looking at both my computer to make sure that my notes are up and the audition's doing its thing and at the camera to make sure that I'm addressing both audiences. What a world we live in. So that's what we're going to try. Um, as we are talking about Raw Review and SmackDown Review, I also want to implore you to make sure you head on over to What Culture Wrestling, uh, What Culture WWE, and check out my ups and downs for Raw. They'll be going up soon. You know, you can get my more specific kind of opinions. This is more of a rant and me throwing my arms around like a maniac. Uh, but also, as we are bringing the new year, to remind you of stuff that you can do should you want to see these podcasts continue and, and help support them. And that's all done through patreon.com for slash Simon316. If everyone that listens to these could go pledge a dollar, you know, it would make me run these a lot easier. Because, you know, it sucks, right? But you need money to eat and live and not die. And the more money I know I can put into the podcast, the more time I can spend on it. And if it keeps, well, if it goes down, I can't do it. That's how it works. Also, follow me on Twitter at Simon316. If you're not on the YouTube channel but you're intrigued, youtube.com forward slash the Miller Report Rules. There's a Facebook group, Simon Miller's Pro Wrestling Podcast. There's loads of stuff. If you're on iTunes, give us five stars, give us a review, do all of that noise. I think that's everything. I usually forget something. Have I forgotten anything? I'm asking a camera. You think I'm talking to you, but I'm not. Got to be weird for the podcast listeners. Anyway, let me get my notes up. Let's go through Raw. Uh, finished watching it a few hours ago. I actually thought for the first episode of the year, there we go, the first episode of the year, it was the best one for a while because I did, I had been thinking towards the end of 2017, we had not hit a bit of a plateau with Raw, but we didn't really have a focus because the Raw Rumble was so far away, it did feel like we were we were biding time till we got to January because in January we can start building to the 25th anniversary of Raw, plus we can start building to the Rumble, you know, probably the second biggest paper of the, of the year these days. And this one felt like it had more purpose. You know, it felt like there were certain storylines we wanted to either get done or put in place so that we can we can hopefully build. And I do think a lot is going to happen on that 25th anniversary of Raw. The rumor over the holiday season was that it's going to feature something to do with The Undertaker. And that's a that's you know, that is a a topic in itself. You know, after what could be deemed a pretty good retirement at the end of you know, WrestleMania 33, he left his hat and coat and a ring, and everyone thought it was very, you know, cool and stuff. Do we want to see The Undertaker come back? I don't know. I guess it depends on the match. The rumor is it could be John Cena versus The Undertaker. Could be decent. It would be interesting in terms of name value. But would it be good? Is it going to tarnish his legacy a bit more? That's kind of the argument people say his matches against Roman Reigns. And who the hell did he fight the year before? I can't even remember, which surely sums it up. It wasn't... Who did he fight the year? Undertaker? I don't even know. How terrible is that? I can't even think who he fought at WrestleMania 32. Maybe he wasn't even there. I don't know. I'm looking in the sky now, trying to think. I gotta look it up. I gotta look it up. I mean, this is the problem now with having a camera on me. Usually, I do this. <laughs> I do this subtly. But hey, you get all the behind-the-scenes stuff now. Isn't that nice? You get the true Simon Miller experience, which is mostly me being a massive, massive moron. He's not going to be at WrestleMania 32 now, is he? I just can't remember for the life of me. Oh, of course, it was the Shane McMahon match. I was there as well. I was at that. Res- I mean, the fact that I forgot sums it up, and that was all about one big jump. Anyway. 
We'll find that on the 21st anniversary of Raw. I'd rather it was someone like John Cena versus Goldberg or Undertaker versus Goldberg, but that's never going to happen. Or I don't think so. I just I don't think Undertaker could wrestle the kind of match Goldberg would want to happen. Anyway, well, literally, you know, Raw, I did think was a decent show. Like, I thought it was nice because we started off with this whole Alexa Bliss uh, Oscar angle. And I like that because a big criticism I have of all the women's stuff they do on WWE is they treat it like it's the Cruiserweight segment or something like that. And they throw all the women into one big story. And I don't like when they do that. I think that sucks. Whereas now they've got a very definitive feud. You know, it's Oscar versus Nia Jax. You know, Oscar on this night beat her in a non-title match. Now she's the number one contender, but she's also going to be in the Royal Rumble. So what's going to happen? Is she going to wait to the Royal Rumble? But I think it's nice. I think it's special, but I think it works. I didn't really like what they did with Sasha Banks and Bailey on this episode of Raw with those bizarre promos with Christmas music on the 1st of January while they just cut really bland promos about the Royal Rumble. I, 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 it was unbelievable. <laughs> it was unbelievable. Um, but, you know, what are you going to do? But yeah, I thought that was a, I thought it was a nice story that went through Raw. If, it was up, if, if I got my choice, I would have Oscar win before the Raw Rumble, I just think that's a more interesting story. I don't know if, if she then stays in the Raw Rumble or what you do. I just think she needs to be the champion for the Raw Rumble. I don't know why. I don't, it depends what the story is, right? Depends what they want to do if Ronda Rousey's coming in, Charlotte, whatever. Um, then we did lead into the sort of the proper start on Raw and it was all about the Raw Rumble. And yes, the Women's Raw Rumble is going to have 30 women and it's going to be over the top rope. And that's probably what you want to do. You may as well have parity with the men if that's the whole idea of this, which I think it is. My only worry, and this is not the fact that we're having a women's or that we're having a men's, is that we're having both. That's long matches. I assume the interviews are going to be the same. And I know WWE makes that up. It's meant to be two minutes or whatever, but they kind of just you know, push the buzzer when it's around two minutes. And I just don't know if I want to watch two Raw Rumbles. That doesn't mean we shouldn't have a women's one, but maybe we should have just picked one. Then that would have caused controversy because people would have been like, oh, I can't not have a men's Raw Rumble. I don't know. Two Raw Rumbles seems like a lot. But again, it depends how they're booked. I think as long as they're booked differently from each other, then yeah, it will be fine. But a small part of me is like, it's going to be an interesting pay-per-view. But I don't know. Maybe they book the Women's Royal Rumble in a way that it feels nothing like the men's. I have no idea. But I do think you may as well just have it exactly the same, because why not? Why all different, you know, why muck around with that? I'm sure they can get women in and surprises and Trish and Lita and all that. And then obviously we segued into everything with Sheamus and Cesaro and Seth Rollins and Jason Jordan. And I know Jason Jordan has taken the place of Dean Ambrose, but it's still a bit like, oh gosh, we <laughs> have seen this so much. But that's okay. I mean... I did think what they did here was all right. Like we had a match between Jason Jordan and Cesaro. It was a decent match. Cesaro lost because, of course, he did. Jason Jordan beat him. And obviously, the storyline here is the bar fill like, got jipped over, screwed over, because Jason Jordan and Seth Rollins were a tag team, you know, for like <clears throat> all of five minutes, and they got a title shot, and they won. Whereas the bar had to scrape and claw for everything they've got. And you know, we got told that Seth Rollins still doesn't like Jason Jordan. Thinks he's a bit of a dick. So it's interesting because and Jason Jordan is still playing the heel. I remember I read something that apparently they were going to twitch it up and, and make him more of a face. I don't think that's the case at all. I'd imagine at some point he still turns on Seth Rollins. And I kind of worried that our WrestleMania match, may all Royal Rumble if they pull the trigger sooner. I don't think they will, though. I think our WrestleMania match could be Jason Jordan versus Seth Rollins. Not the greatest match in the world. I don't, know, I don't, I don't want to judge it, right? They may do a really good job with it. But I think that's where this is going. I think he's going to go full on heel. Like There was a really weird segment later on in the night where... Um, uh, what's his name? Jason Jordan interrupted like this little shield reunion when Rollins was saying, oh, Reigns, I love you. And Reigns was like, oh, Rollins, I love you too. Let's kiss. And he then came in and basically pretended to be Dean Ambrose. You know, he, he said, believe that. And he walked off. That was actually quite a good segment, I thought. It's quite funny. And the idea, of course, was to underline the fact that Jason Jordan is an idiot. That we're meant to think he's an idiot. So it's intriguing. I mean, the shield thing's dead. And that's not really WWE's fault. Roman Reigns got ill and then Dean Ambrose got ill. But I thought that was decent. And yeah, the match between Cesaro and, and uh, um, Cesaro and Jason Jordan, I thought was I thought it was fine. I mean, I thought it was fine. It, it, it was it was good. And this then kind of led into the build up between Roman Reigns and Samoa Joe that we were going to get all night long for the IC title. The stipulation was that if uh, Reigns got DQ'd, he'd still lose the belt after what happened last week. And you know they built th Samoa Joe cut such a damn good promo on this episode of Raw. I mean, such a damn good promo. He somehow managed to get in the fact that he was going to win the IC title. He's going to beat Roman Reigns up. He took out Dean Ambrose and he took a shot at Rene, Rene Young for being Dean Ambrose's wife. And he did it completely effortlessly. He did it completely in his stride. And he made, if it's scripted or not, I don't know, but he made it all sound legit. And he got more and more angry as it went on. It was just excellent. I mean, it really, really was just excellent. And Samoa Joe right now, I think... Is, is awesome. And the match they had too was absolutely fantastic. I know it's only the first, pretty much the first wrestling show of 2018, 
I'll be amazed if we get a better match on, on Raw for some time after that. I don't know what they do with the feud now either because, you know, Roman Reigns won clean. I imagine Samojo would do something to keep it going, but I was surprised by that. And do we, I don't know if we sit at the Rumble or not because I guess they're both going to be in the Rumble. You can do the match and have them both in the Rumble as well. So that was a bit strange that we're done with that. However, the match itself was, I mean, it really, really was phenomenally good. Um, you know, they kind of teased it. Oh, Roman's going to get DQ because he's mad, but obviously he didn't. He won with the spear. I think about 18 minutes, 20 minutes maybe. But yeah, I mean, genuinely just, it's Samoa Joe, and don't get me wrong, that's not taking anything with Roman Reigns. Roman Reigns, I think, is incredibly underrated when it comes to his in-ring work just because of all the controversy that goes along with him. But Samoa Joe really is, he's really, he's something else, Samoa Joe. I'm such a big fan of Samoa Joe. I can't believe that when WWE first brought him in, the plan was to just keep him on NXT. It's like, are you mad? Are you absolutely mad? Clearly, just awesome. And also, this is one of those scenarios where, yes, him having that feud with Brock Lesnar and losing actually did help him because it was booked right and he looked strong in the match. It didn't matter that Brock Lesnar beat him. It was the fact he was in the ring with him. That's the one time I can think that it worked. Usually that stuff doesn't work, but it definitely worked here. You know, if you're one of these people that you don't, maybe just click through on YouTube to watch, um, or watch Ups and Downs, obviously, then you get all of this information. But, you know, if you want to watch sort of the actual Raw, just watch that. If you don't watch anything else, just watch that. It was awesome. But then there was weird stuff on Raw, because then Bray Wyatt took on Apollo Crews. Now, I get that you don't have to... Not all the matches have to be storylines that we've seen. However, this had the Titus brand on the outside, and Dana Brooke got scared by Bray Wyatt's face and did this awful acting and fell into Titus O'Neil. And then Bray Wyatt just won with Sister Abigail. And I was like, what is the Titus brand? <laughs> like, what is it? What is it? It was so weird. The whole thing was saved because then Woke and Matt Hardy came on the screen, cut one of his mental promos that just cracks me up. And his face divided into about 40,000 different screens. wasn't that many. It was just great. It's just nuts. It's just so weird, the Matt Hardy. It's, even the laugh. Just, I know that, had that video of the you know, 10 hour of laughing Matt Hardy, but I don't know what it is. A, a lot of people are down on the Woken Matt Hardy stuff. They think it's too WWE or it's not like it was before. I think we're just getting going. At the moment, we're kind of just establishing the character with promos. I think it's really fun. And hey, it makes me laugh. It makes me laugh. That's all that it entertains me. And if it's doing that, I'm, I'm all right with it. So I guess they fight at the Royal Rumble, right? Maybe we eke it out to WrestleMania 2, I don't know. But, I, I mean, don't let Bray Wyatt win. That's a terrible thing to say. And he beat Apollo Crews here, rare for, for Bray. But Matt Hardy is just, I get it, he's the old guy and he probably should lose to Bray. But Bray hasn't been built up enough for me. And I just love welcome Matt Hardy. I want him to go on this huge run and probably win the world title, if I'm completely honest. Um, what else did we have here? Then, that, this one, the Oscar Nia Jax match. Nia Jax. Oscar Alexa Blitz match one, which we've talked about. There was a little bit with Nia Jax as well where Alexa went to him and said, oh, best buddy, come help me. And Nia Jax was like, "Now nah, I've got to go see Enzo in the hospital. And he was actually out, legit. He had the flu, apparently, Enzo. That's why he wasn't on the show and we didn't have the 205 live match. And Alexa basically said, look, you've got to choose him or me. And Nia Jax walked off with her chicken soup to give to Enzo. So that's the end of that friendship. And it was okay. I mean, it was fine. I don't really like the Enzo Nia Jax stuff because I think it's weird. I don't think WWE does romance very well. I said this on a What Culture video. And someone came at me saying, well, what about the Stephanie McMahon, Triple H, Kurt Angle, Love Triangle? What, the one they just stopped and ended with no payoff? Yeah, that was good. And I said at the time, the only good one was the, the Mega Powers imploding. But I mentioned that one. Most, I don't, well, it's just my opinion as well. Most romantic storylines in WWE, I don't think end particularly well. Anyway, that's just what I think. What, was what did come next was awesome. This is the Braun Strowman moment. Braun Strowman came out to take on Rhino, which was the strangest match in the world. Braun Strowman versus Rhino. He started kicking his ass. Then Heath Slater just got in the ring to get involved. So he said, right, I'll just fight you too. And then he just power slammed him for a while. Crowd wanted more, so he kept giving them more. And that was that. But it was very entertaining. And Braun Strowman was so over. He was so over. The crowd loved everything he damn well did. And it may have just been a hyped up crowd, you know, New Year's Raw and all of that kind of stuff. But... It was awesome. He really did feel like a megastar, Braun Strowman here. And I still can't get over the year he had in 2017. And it certainly doesn't look like it's going to slow down at any point in 2018. And that's pretty damn awesome, if you ask me. So that was just, yeah. Braun Strowman and Samoa Joe are my dudes on Raw. I'm Woken Matt Hardy. They're the people I, and Samoa Joe. They're the people I really look forward to seeing. Did I say Samoa Joe twice then? I don't know. This is the problem with having me on camera. I can't do the edits. Maybe I will edit that out. Then we went backstage. Kane was like, hey, Braun, forget the fact I threw you in a bin a few months ago. Why don't we team up against Brock Lesnar at Raw Rumble? And Braun was like, nah, don't worry about it. That was a really stupid segment. That threw continuity out the window and made someone that's meant to be like, you know, a dude that thinks he got burned as a kid. Didn't work. <laughs> it didn't work for me. 
What was good though, and again, I made a video for What Culture called Why Finn Balor Should Quit WWE. Again, the Why series is all about encouraging debate and kind of playing devil's advocate for the people that go, oh, it's a stupid thing. Of course, it would be stupid if Finn Balor left WWE, but it doesn't mean we can't talk about it. We can't pitch the idea. But I said in that video, hey, if we've got nothing going on for Balor and we've got nothing going on for Gallows and Anderson, why don't we put them together given their relationship from New Japan? And what happened in the first episode of Raw in 2018 after that video? They put them back together against the mid and they won. Now, this could be a one and done. You never know with WWE. You never know what they're thinking. However, they don't have any plans for these three men, or at least it doesn't seem that way. So it works on twofold as well. One, if you put them back together as a team, you are basically, well, A, you're doing something with them, but also you're making up for the fact the Shield thing went to hell. And I'm not saying that those three are as good as the Shield. However, they do have lineage. They do have some nostalgia if you are into New Japan, and they have chemistry together, so they can easily fill that void, and you're doing something with them. I don't know why you wouldn't do that. They could be like the new day of Raw, but in a different fashion. I think it's a really good idea. The match was fine. I mean, it was what it was. It was a cool ending, I thought, because Gallows and Anderson hit the magic killer on Bo Dallas, I think, and then Finn Balor hit the Coupe de Gras. So it was like they were a team. And The Miz is coming back next week as well. So maybe you could do The Miz to Raj versus those three for a while. It's not, it's not ideal, but I, I still think it would work. But I'm just glad to see Gallows and Anderson back on TV, given that we didn't see them for ages. And before that, they were just hocking merch which I thought was very strange. Um, but yeah, I mean, we had the 205 Live stuff next, which was just Enzo. We were meant to be, it was meant to be Enzo versus Cedric Alexander. Instead, it became, what was it? It was Alexander and Gold, Goldust came out, which made no sense. Did our crews away? I didn't understand that. But I do like seeing Goldust on TV. I like Goldust. They took on Drew Gallic and Davari and Cedric Alexander and Goldust won. I mean, it was there. It was there because WWE feels like they need to put crews away on the TV, and they did. And for some reason, they chose Goldust. But it, I like Goldust. I'd be right with seeing Goldust more, even if you do put him on 205 Live and that breaks the rules. He's coming to the end of his career, but he's really good. So, yeah, that was a bit... It was weird. <laughs> it was weird when Goldust just saunters out. You're like, oh, Goldust is here. The team with Cedric Alexander. Alexander hit the lumbar check. I think he beat Davari. I can't even remember. It was, it was a bit like... Eh. Um, and then that brought us to the, the main event. Uh, the main event, or the main segment, which was, you know, Brock Lesnar came out, Paul Heyman cut his big promo... Where he was all like, oh, Brock Lesnar's the... I like, I like the Paul Heyman, Brock Lesnar dynamic. A lot of people think it's past its sell-by date, which it probably is. However, it still works for me. Kane comes out, choke slams Brock, goes to leave. Brock sits up, chucks Kane out the ring. Load of geeks come out to hold Kane back. That's how the show goes off here. Now, it is strange that Braun Strowman never came out because he's meant to be involved in this too. However, oh, hit my mic. However, given what we were trying to achieve here... I thought it was fine. We've still got a good few weeks to the Royal Rumble. Brock Lesnar looks like the beast, which he needs to. He's the universal champion. Kane is kind of like the cannon fodder in all of this, which sucks. I love Kane, and I'd be all right for Kane to win the universal title as one last pat on the back to say thank you for 20 years of hard work. More so, really. It was Kane, he debuted 97. He did loads before that. Um, and yeah, I thought it was decent. I thought it was like, I, look, it worked for me. That's all I can say. It, it worked for me. And overall, I thought Raw. I did. I didn't. I didn't think it was a terrible episode of Raw. Um, there wasn't. I, there was rumors before they were going to do something big. I didn't think they did anything big. I think it just put a lot of stuff in place. We've established some new relationships. Uh, you know, with the women's division, we've got some controversy, for lack of a better term, heading in to the Raw Rumble. You know, we know what the women's Raw Rumble is going to be now. Thirty women, and there's not thirty women on that roster, so you know you're getting some surprises. I thought it was okay. I thought it built well. It got me interested. We'll see what happens. I think SmackDown could be a better show just because we've got all the stuff with Shane McMahon, Daniel Bryan, but we'll talk about that tomorrow. But all in all, yeah, I think... I'm not saying we're going to tread water till the 25th anniversary. I think more things will happen before that, but I think that's when things are really going to kick off. I think we're going to get some WrestleMania programs. I think we're going to get some big blowers for the Royal Rumble. You know, I think we'll have a really good picture of where we're going come April for WrestleMania 34 in New Orleans once that 25th anniversary show is one and done. Because also, who's on that card? We mentioned Untake. Is he on there? Don't know. Is Gold Dust on it? Gold Dust. Goldberg. <laughs> Gold Dust hopes he's on it. But Goldberg could be on that card, right? He's in good shape. He's working out. I follow him on Instagram. My dad, you know, I see him every day. There's no reason he couldn't have a match. Now, the question you have is who does he face? Does he lose? Does he win? Seems silly to have him win against anybody else. So that is intriguing to me. But you want star power in WrestleMania. I imagine he'll be on the 25th anniversary. Has that been announced, Goldberg? I know Shawn Michaels and Undertaker have. Maybe Goldberg has too. I don't know. But there's value in that. And maybe that's something that comes to light over the next few weeks. And, well, the next few weeks, really, because months will, will, will be there. And I think, you know, if that does happen, I think Raw will be a, a pretty interesting show. 
and we can just take it from there. And I don't think Brock Lesnar is going to lose at the Royal Rumble. I mean, we'll get into the Royal Rumble when we're closer to the time. I'm not sure I know who's going to win the Royal Rumble. Like John Cena entered himself into it over the weekend via Twitter, as you do in 2017, 2018. I guess he could win it. it get, I, 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 see, the, the plan, I think, at one point was meant to be John Cena versus Jinder Mahal. I don't think Jinder Mahal is back in the world title picture now, because as we saw last week on SmackDown, he's now in the US title picture. I don't think he's going to ping pong around that much. And Sami Zayn is fighting AJ Styles tomorrow night on SmackDown, so that certainly does seem like we've moved everybody around. I don't know. I don't know where they're going with that, but that is interesting. But that also does have a direct effect on the Royal Rumble, and this is I don't know what's going to happen at the Royal Rumble. So yeah, we're gonna we're gonna have to we're gonna have to wait and see. But as for Raw, I enjoyed it. I thought it was good. I didn't mention the best bit of Raw. How did I not mention the best bit? Well, we saved it to the end. The first thing I saw on Raw was a sign saying, Simon Miller, give me an up. <laughs> so you can go watch my ups and downs. You're damn right I gave that guy an up. You're damn right I did. Look, I'm 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 a shill, man. If you want to get if you want me to give you an up and you bring a sign for Raw and it gets on TV, that makes me feel like a kid at a candy store. Now, that is ridiculous. That blew my brain. I mean, that was just unbelievable to see a sign aimed at yourself when you're sat down on your couch watching a wrestling program you watched for, you know, 25 years or whatever. So that was great. That was obviously the highlight of Raw. It may be the highlight of my year. We're only two days in. Think of that. Tuesday morning, 2nd of January, I watched that. I was like, see, I'm done. I go back to bed for 363 days. <laughs> Genuinely blew my mind. Um, but yeah, I mean, obviously the other big thing we have this week that we will just talk about is Wrestle Kingdom 12. The build is kind of, not in a bad way. Oh, no, my computer, don't do that. My computer just, hang on. This is, this, is the, this is the joy you get from watching it. Basically, my computer has locked itself, and we can't do that because the audio may stop recording. I need, to, I need to monitor it, obviously. And now it won't let me log back in. See, this is the only problem with recording it. I'm going to leave it in as well. Joyous, joyous for everyone. Um, yeah, I think the Wrestle Kingdom 12 build it hasn't, hasn't died down. I think they did all their good work a couple of weeks ago. I mean, uh, the, 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 ru not the rumor, but the news is, is that, the, you know, pre- Day ticket sales are better than they have been in ages. And Japan has huge walk-up uh, day sales as well. So apparently they could sell it out. So they've done the job. They've absolutely nailed that. So I think they kind of did the, the work they had to do, and they just left it and let it to simmer, which is probably quite a good idea. But there has been some really cool quotes by Chris Jericho and uh, Kenny Omega especially. You know, stuff like, you're going to have to kill me if you want to beat me and all this kind of, all this kind of stuff. And even the stuff that night, I know we talked about it last year, because I got ill, by the way, if you're wondering why there's a massive gap between the podcasts. I got really ill over Christmas and lost a lot of weight because I had a stomach virus. It was horrendous. Anyway, you know, Naito even came out and kind of took some shots at New Japan saying that, you know, they give WWE too much credit or, you know, they don't attack them enough. You know, in story or not, I actually thought it added to everything as well. But I am excited. I think, I know there's, there's other great matches on that card, but I really do think Naito versus Okada and Jericho versus Omega... Call it a dual main event, whatever you want, I don't care. I just think as a fan, I think this Wrestle Kingdom 12 could be a really big deal. I know a lot more people that are interested in it, they want to see what's going to happen with it. They're intrigued more than they ever have been intrigued when it comes to a New Japan show. And I think that's reflective in the ticket sales as well. And the fact that overseas ticket sales are higher. I bet New Japan World seems somewhat of a spike this week. And that's what you want, right? doesn't matter if you don't shoot up in percentages, but if you can you know, even make those baby steps and get to where you need to be, you know, if you do baby steps over the entire year and they, you know, they feel like in a better position now when they were at Wrestle Kingdom 11, and Wrestle Kingdom 11 obviously had Omega versus Okada, which many people said was the best match they've ever seen. So that's kind of a hard thing. I mean, it's a great thing to build off, but also a hard thing to replicate. Now, it doesn't mean this show is going to be as good, but arguably it's already in a better state because before it, people are more excited. As long as you pay it off to a certain degree, I think you can then go into whatever's next feeling pretty good and having, having some good momentum behind you. So we will see. I am very excited. I mean, I watched Wrestle Kingdom 11 and I watched Wrestle Kingdom 10, but this is easily the one I've been most excited about, I guess because just naturally, as it has grown, I've managed to get more into it and more interested to see what they're going to do. That's what it's all about, right? The more you engage and the more you uh, get close to something, the more you want to see what happens. So it's a good week. It's a good week for pro wrestling is my point. Uh, like I say, we'll be back tomorrow to talk about SmackDown. We'll be back later in the week to talk about New Japan. Um... You know, if there's any big talking points, each episode will probably last longer than this. I mean, my head has said about 30 minutes, so it is. But, you know, if the goal, the 25th anniversary, for example, if Goldberg does something, we'll get into that. And we'll talk about the specifics. It really just is the fact that while I thought it was a decent episode of Raw, it kind of was just there. It kind of just made sure that we that we flowed along. So SmackDown tomorrow may be longer just because there may be stuff to talk about in terms of Shane Man Daniel Bryan. However, the most important thing about all of this is let me know if this works for you. Hopefully, this has made the YouTube crowd a bit happier because you can see my face, my weirdly lit face. I look like an egg because the lighting in here is terrible. 
Um, and hopefully it makes the podcast crew happy because while you're not getting sort of one dose, you're getting more over the space of whatever that wrestling week you know, has. We'll always do Raw and SmackDown, but if TNA does something big, not called cool TNA anymore, Impact does something big, we'll do that. Obviously, we'll do New Japan, we'll do WWE pay-per-views. You know, I watch Ring of Honor, all that stuff, so you know, we could have done all the stuff they did at the end of the last year. So whatever. But let me know what you think. Be that on Twitter at Simon316, in the Facebook group, um, Simon Miller's Pro Wrestling Podcast. What we will start doing as well is we're going to start asking, uh, you know, I'll start asking for Q&As post Raw and SmackDown in that Facebook group. So you can ask a question and we'll make sure we end up each episode with that. We haven't done it today because I'm just, you know, getting back into the flow. And yeah, we'll see and, and we'll see how it gets from there. But again, please do follow me on Twitter at Simon316. Please do join the Facebook group going over the stuff I've literally just said. Um, if you do feel like you've got a dollar to spare in 2018 and you'd like to help this stuff grow, please do go to patreon.com for Simon316 and do that. Plus, you get exclusive audio. The latest one I did was me talking about uh, all the wrestlers that I've met, including one that told me to F off. So if you really want to do that, that that's, the, that's um, in the Patreon as well. And yeah, if you could tell a few people about Simon's Pro Wrestling Podcast, if you think it's fun, do that. And make sure you go watch Ups and Downs as well. Ups and Downs for all on what culture wrestling. So uh, that would all be awesome. But thank you very much. Happy New Year. I hope you had a nice Christmas and festive season. And I hope you're just happy all around, really. But I will be back back soon. Is there anything I want to jump into? I don't think so. I think, um, you know, I, we, we're clearly heading towards Roman Reigns versus Brock Lesnar at WrestleMania 34. Hopefully that means they do take the IC title off Reigns before then. I don't want WrestleMania 34 to end a Roman Reigns with two belts. I just don't. I got nothing against Roman Reigns. I think Roman Reigns has had a tough ride given everything that's happened. He's a very good pro wrestler. Maybe not the person they want WWE wanted him to be. And if they had made that sort of up in their heads earlier, they would have all benefited from it. But, you know, there's no point crying over spilt milk. We are where we are. And it's all about where we go from here as opposed to as opposed to anything else. But no, I mean, I think we've just kind of stumbled into, into the new year. The news will start picking up again after this. I'm sure this week we'll have loads of news. We'll find more about Finn Balor and the club's relationship. What they plan to do with Oscar, what they're going to do with Reigns. You know, what's, I mean, what's Lesnar's status? The latest is his contract can potentially run to August because it has extensions that WWE can put into place if they want. Otherwise, it ends at WrestleMania. Is Rey Mysterio going to come back? I mean, who knows what 2018 holds, right? Who knows? Who knows? WWE doesn't even know because sometimes they book on the fly. And at some point, of course, we'll have to talk about Alpha Entertainment, which is Vince McMahon's new company, where apparently he's jumping back into the, into the American football world. You know what? Good for him. Good for him. Even if it falls flat on his face, it doesn't matter because it's all about trying. You can't really succeed or fail in this life as long as you try because if you try, you put yourself out there. And that's the main thing. But it will be interesting and it could have ramifications on WWE. I know it's a separate company, but it's still one person's money. So who knows what happens with that? And apparently, the announcement for that is coming quite soon. Who knows what it is? Maybe he buys the Canadian Football League. Maybe he does buy an American an NFL team. Maybe he does restart the XFL. I don't know, man. I'm just some idiot running my mouth on YouTube. And I'll speak to you again soon. <laughs>